The antibody of development in, in multiple myeloma to date has, has focused on a variety of different targets. The two that have gotten FDA approval thus far have been daratumumab that targets CD38 and elotuzumab that targets SLAMF7. There are several other uh, anti-CD38 antibodies that are currently being developed. Um, and the, I think the, the interesting thing about CD38 is that it's not a target that's necessarily unique to plasma cells. It's also expressed on activated T cells, um, as well as a variety of other immune cells. And so um, how this all fits into uh, the paradigm, I think, um, it needs to be considered when divide, uh, coming up with therapies. Um, another interesting target that is being looked at um, is BCMA. BCMA, in contrast to um, something like CD38, is, is primarily expressed on the late stage of plasma cell differentiation, so for the most part, primarily on the mature plasma cells and malignant plasma cells. And certainly we're seeing some very early uh, CAR T-cell therapy with BCMA-targeted CARs that are looking very promising. And I know that BITES, bispecific antibodies, are currently being developed to uh, BCMA and um, also monoclonal antibodies with a toxin associated to it are being developed. So that's another target that I think is interesting and we'll probably be seeing a lot of. Um, another completely different class of monoclonal antibodies that has globally shown promise across a vast number of diseases that in which they're being tested are the checkpoint inhibitors. Um, and more specifically, uh, PD-1 and PD-L1 antibodies. Uh, there has been, I think similarly to uh, the data with elotuzumab, what we've seen is that as single agent, PD-1 blockade does not seem to be very effective. Um, this was data that uh, is, is being published uh, and it's scheduled to come out pretty soon. But at ASH uh, in 2015, what we saw was surprisingly that combining uh, pembrolizumab, a PD-1 antibody, with revlimid and dexamethasone in revlimid relapsed patients and also in revlimid refractory patients was able to elicit up to a 70% response rate, a, approximately a 50% response rate in the revlimid refractory patients. And this has really, I think, generated a huge interest of the role of uh, checkpoint inhibitors in multiple myeloma. Clearly, just like with other malignancies, there are a variety of other checkpoints that can be targeted, and um, CTLA-4 is one, uh, TIM-3 is another one. Uh, another target which is actively being studied right now in multiple myeloma is PD-L1. There's an antibody called Dervalumab that is being tested by um, Celgene right now in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone. Um, and I think, again, there, the idea is that checkpoint inhibition is critical um, to the overall development of an anti-tumor response, but it's the presence of an image that can potentially augment this overall efficacy. Well, excitingly now, we have two monoclonal antibodies with elotuzumab and daratumumab, which are important immunotherapies that we can use in myeloma. However, now if we start thinking about checkpoint inhibitors, I think that's another exciting wave that we see coming down the road. So in addition to CAR T cells, which is another new emerging therapy as well, again, targeting or using the immune system, I think checkpoint inhibitors is going to be very important as well. We've seen now checkpoint inhibitors proven as a valuable uh, therapy in other solid tumors. We've seen drugs like nivolumab it just recently approved in Hodgkin's lymphoma with very impressive response rates um, in the relapse refractory setting for Hodgkin's lymphoma. And importantly, now we're starting to see that transition or activity now in myeloma. Initially, when we looked at drugs like PD-1 inhibitors in myeloma as a single agent, they were not active, and so there was waning interest in checkpoint inhibitors by itself as a single agent. However, importantly, when we look at the combination with pembrolizumab and lenalidomide and dexamethasone, when we add it to our lenalidomide index, very impressive response rates, a completely different story that we see here, where we see very nice high response rates, even in patients who are lenalidomide refractory or bortezomib refractory with the combination. So I think some very exciting science and very exciting data when you look at, for example, pembrolizumab with lenalidomide index. Importantly, if you look at pembrolizumab and pomalidomide index, again, also very high response rates, including in pomalidomide refractory patients as well. So I think that when you look at checkpoint inhibitors, really the future is going to be in combination with various backbone therapies that we have now. So very exciting now, multiple phase three studies have been launched with pembrolizumab both with pomalidomide and relapsed, as well as lenalidomide and newly diagnosed myeloma as well. 
and a number of other companies as well now are starting to look at checkpoint inhibitors in combination in myeloma. Newer data emerging is certainly suggesting that the antibodies can be combined safely and effectively with about anything. And it's suggesting that the antibodies alone are not very active, but they are really great partners for other drugs. And they can do this long term without added toxicity. And I think that's a big home run. And whether the partners Revlimid, Kyprolis, Bortezomib, and Laro, or hopefully chemotherapy, which we're forgetting about, I don't really know. And I think the other thing we've got to be able to get our hands around, it may be you can start slowly with these antibodies and start adding other things in if indeed your less complicated regimen isn't working early on. It's a real advantage of the antibodies.